Hi everyone, so thank you very much for inviting me along today. Uh, it's great to see so many of you here. So uh, my name is Colin McGinley, I work for Innovate UK and uh, I am the UK's national contact point for Horizon Europe Energy. So I'll just explain what that means. So um, as a national contact point, my job is basically to for any UK organisation to navigate the landscape of European funding for energy. Um, so if you've ever thought about looking at European funding, um, please you know, feel free to get in touch with me. Or with uh, you know, businesses, universities, research organisations um, of various sizes, all the way from micro businesses through to, to large uh, organisations. So in terms of what I do, I help you um, to find uh, funding opportunities that are actually relevant to your business. Um, I help you to find partners, um, so in many cases these uh, funding opportunities require you to collaborate with partners from across the continent uh, and that I can use my network to support you uh, with that uh, activity. Um, I can help you to prepare your proposal, um, you know, you know, based on kind of my experience of supporting other proposals and also um, help to review your proposal as well. Um, and basically our job is to ensure that UK organisations are accessing as much of that funding um, as, as possible um, and that we're supporting UK organisations to collaborate with partners across Europe <coughs> um, at the cutting edge of, of research and development. So the question I'm asked um, often is, well, what, what, what is Horizon Europe? So Horizon Europe is the EU's primary mechanism for funding research and development. Um, it's a major uh, programme uh, and the bit that I specifically cover is known as Pillar 2. So Pillar 1 is around very early stage uh, science, Pillar 2 is about industrial competitiveness and Pillar 3 is about kind of later stage commercialisation activity. So Pillar 2 is the area that I focus on um, and you'll see that in Pillar 2 you have a number of clusters. So the UK has a national contact point for each of these bullet points. Um, I'm specifically a national contact point for energy. Um, so just to talk about the fundamentals of Horizon Europe. So um, you must apply as part of a consortium um, representing at least uh, three member states or associate countries. So you as a UK organisation would have to find at least three partners from, from across Europe. Projects um, can last anything from two to five years or, or longer, and we're talking about kind of multi-million euro projects. So it's a, it's a significant piece of work, um, but it allows you to collaborate with the key players in your sector and push forward um, you know, new research. Um, preparing a proposal can take um, you know, six months or, or longer, um, but, uh, and but we, can, we can support you with that uh, activity. Um, and so often people will come to me with an idea, like an innovation idea for their company or for their university um, or for their local authority that will benefit them, but they don't really have a clear idea of how that innovation will benefit people across Europe. And so when you're approaching the programme, it's important to understand how will my project benefit people not just in Scotland, the UK, but benefit all Europeans. And that's very much what they're looking for with this. Um, and this covers some low, low technology readiness level activities, so kind of early stage science, but um, also a lot of kind of later stage activity as well. <laughs> so trying to take science from the lab and implement it in a real world environment. Um, and you know, in terms of the benefits of Horizon Europe, so what I've said there, you know, you would think, you know, that, that's quite a big piece of work. What, what are the benefits for my business? But um, what you can see um, is that the organisations that participate in this programme generally tend to do very well in terms of R&D performance and as a result they're um, more competitive, not just in Scotland but at, at a European level. They're also very much connected to the ecosystem within their sector and so they've, um, you know, the products that they put on the market are influenced by you know, um, the, the, you know, cutting edge science. So it allows you to solve those global grand challenges such as climate change, decarbonising the built environment and you, you collaborate with some of the, you know, the world's leading organisations in your field um, you know, from, from across Europe. Um, it often will allow you to access cutting edge technologies and research centres um, so you, know, you might be able to use uh, research facilities that you otherwise would not be able to access. Um, and uh, also an important point is if you participate in one of these projects and you're successful 
it gets allows you to contribute to the dialogue around policies. So, for example, in the built environment, policies and standards are really important to product development. So, if you're part of those projects, it allows you to have that influence. Um, and also, it makes sure that any product that you develop in Scotland has relevance at a European level and at a global uh, level. Um, and often the people that you collaborate with in your consortium will um, in, you know, in the future buy your products or will develop partnerships with you at a later date. Um, and the, the most important thing that Innovate UK wants to see is the creation of new jobs in the UK uh, and, and supporting uh, the UK's competitiveness. <coughs> so uh, a lot of um, people will ask me, well, can I still apply to Horizon Europe? And the answer is yes. Um, despite the uncertainty with, uh, in relation to Brexit, you can still apply to Horizon Europe. Uh, you're fully eligible to apply um, and also to coordinate a consortium um, with one key caveat. So if you're successful uh, and you get to the point of signing your grant agreement with the European Union, which is the agreement um, around how much money you're going to receive, if at that point the UK has not yet um, made a decision on association, um, then you would not be able to coordinate the proposal, so you would have to hand that over to one and to another partner. So that, that's kind of the key caveat. And as it currently stands, um, because of the fact that the UK has not yet associated to the programme, uh, your money comes from the UK government through its financial guarantee rather than Europe. So the point that I want to make here is that you can apply, you can coordinate proposal, um, but um, for now, you know, I, I, you'll, you'll receive the same money as anybody else, but for now it'll come from the UK government rather than Europe. <coughs> the, 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 the European Commission are very keen to see continued UK participation in these proposals. Um, and a really important point here is that Horizon Europe is just one part of the funding landscape for energy. <coughs> So if you're, um, if you're developing a new product in the built environment sector and, um, and, and you're trying to think, right, how can I get some money into the business to do R&D? There's loads of different options at the moment. Um, and these options will all you know, vary in relevance depending on where you are in your journey. So if you're at kind of an early stage in your journey, you're looking at kind of, um, you know, getting a kind of prototype developed, etc., then you might want to think about like a, one of the grants that's open to solo applicants. It doesn't require you to develop a consortium, so you might want to look at something like an Innovate UK Smart Grant, um, uh, so that you know, or a targeted Innovate UK call, which doesn't require a consortium. Um, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot available there that will um, you know take your product from kind of early stage research all the way through to commercialization. I won't go through each bit. Uh, in turn, but it's uh, just to emphasize that Horizon Europe is just one part of that um, ecosystem. Um, and you know, I think Richard, well, Richard mentioned that there's a lot of support in Scotland, and I think Scotland has you know, one of the best kind of ecosystems for supporting innovation from a, from a grant point of view, um, so it's a good place to be. Um, so I would look to take advantage of those opportunities as well. So, and historically, the UK has done quite well you know, in attracting this money, uh, particularly in the energy space. Um, and, and as you can see from this map, Scotland has done very well. Um, so, the UK has attracted 410 million euros of, of European money for, for energy research. And um, that's benefited um, over 400 different UK organisations uh, representing you know, universities, businesses, uh, and research centres, and, and also you know, local authorities, councils. Um, and you know this money has not just gone to kind of big research centres. It's it's gone to micro businesses, and it's, it's gone to you know uh, you know SMEs. It's, it's gone to you know all, all, all around the UK and all you know has relevance to all uh, all types of businesses. And as you can see here, Scotland's done very well. Um, it's, it's it's one of the top two areas in terms of attracting uh, European money for energy research um, alongside London. So just to bring this to life, to give an example of a successful year, a successful proposal that involved a uh, Scottish um, organisation. Uh, so this is a, a project known as Impress, um, and it involves um, Integrated Environmental Solutions, or IES, um, who I believe are based just outside Glasgow. Um, and this was about developing new uh, prefab components uh, for um, improving energy efficiency and retrofitting. Um, and it had kind of three key uh, focus areas. So 
polyurethane-based insulated panel, um, precast concrete sandwich panel, and a precast concrete sandwich panel with phase change materials. <laughs> Easy for me to say. So basically, they worked with a, um, a, a consortia um, of 17 different partners <coughs> from across seven countries. They actually coordinated this project as well. Um, so th this consortium included universities, it included research centres and a number of businesses. Um, and so you know, IES were able to benefit from that by building the network within Europe and also support, you know, moving their product um, into the next level in terms of um, you know, its, its, uh, its uh, technology readiness. So um, how does this relate to, to you? So th this uh, presentation is very timely because we're just at the start of the uh, what we call the work program for 2023 and 24, which is um, the kind of list of funding calls that we have. Um, and there's a lot available if you're in the built environment. So I mentioned earlier that Horizon Europe is split into clusters. This is the area that I focus on, which is around climate, energy, and mobility. Um, and you know the, the, the overarching theme here is around how do we support Europe to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. So every proposal that you develop has to be um, you know, drafted within that context. So these are the uh, within the cluster you have six different what we call destinations, which are basically research themes. And the one that you'll be interested in is the fourth one, which is around energy use. So that's around how we can uh, you know, reduce the uh, use of energy and make that use more efficient. So um, in terms of dates for your diary, uh, the, the key areas uh, for you guys are the, the two at the bottom, which is around the highly energy efficient European building stock uh, themes. Um, so you'll see that there are a few deadlines that are actually coming up next month. Uh, well, in, in, well, in the next couple of months, uh, in, in April, but there's a lot coming up in 2023, uh, later in 23 and, and into 2024 uh, as well. And um, so, you know, the, the, you know, what I'd encourage you to do is to have a look at what's coming up uh, as, as soon as you can, so that you can identify if any topics are relevant to you, because um, you don't want to be in a situation where you just don't have enough time to prepare a proposal. And that's kind of, that's one of the biggest issues um, is just lack of time. So, um, it's but I'll, I'll talk through those uh, today. So, what is destination four? So, this is basically the Europe's mechanism for funding uh, innovation in the built environment, and it's around efficient use of energy, um, that is um, you know uh, open um, to to all and is inclusive. Um, and there are nineteen uh, funding opportunities in total. And whenever uh, people look at these topics, the first thing that I advise them to do is have a look through Europe's strategy in this area. And if you look at the European Commission's built environment strategy, you know, there's a very strong focus on targeting energy demand um, initially. Uh, so that, that's one of the, the key areas of focus. Um, and and you'll, that's you know, very strongly aligned with Europe's uh, strategic energy technology plan or SET plan, which is basically there their uh, energy plan for the whole of Europe. And any proposal in this area has to contribute to those two last bullet mm -hmm. points, which is around you know, technological breakthroughs to achieve climate neutrality, but also increasing energy efficiency in industry. So there's a very strong focus on industrial energy use as well, um, uh, and, and reducing you know, things like air pollution. So, um, the, what you'll see is that a lot of the funding topics will start with B4P, and that stands for Built for People Partnership. Um, and I'll just talk quickly about, about this organisation. So this is a public-private collaboration, uh, that, uh, which is you know which is open to anyone across Europe. If you're in the UK, you can join uh, the partnership. Um, and basically, this is around you know uh, addressing climate neutrality within buildings whilst preserving Europe's cultural heritage. So this is uh, this is the group that basically drafts the calls. So you know, being part of the partnership can be really useful because you can kind of um, be part of that dialogue. Um, and they're basically focused on you know how do we de decarbonize Europe's built environment uh, whilst you know bringing together the full value chain. You know, all the way from the people that develop new technologies through to the you know the, the private and public organisations that are actually going to implement those technologies in the real world. Um, and so they, they want to deliver you know, new cutting-edge innovation and long-lasting uh, behavioural change. 
in the building department. So I mentioned that there are 19 topics in total. Um, I'll, I've got them here today, but obviously you, know, um, you might want to look into them in, in greater depth. But there's a strong focus on um, deep renovation, so um, looking at how we can carry out deep retrofits, particularly on um, older buildings or buildings that have kind of cultural significance. So if you're in that space, I would have a look at that. Um, following on from what Emma said, there's also um, a strong focus on kind of robotics and artificial intelligence um, in, in the built environment as well. And if, if you're developing software that um, looks at energy use within buildings, um, you know, these topics are very relevant. There's a very strong focus on that, such as the, the BIM-based um, processes and, and digital twins uh, topic there as well. Um, I mentioned about kind of data and management of data within buildings. So this innovative use of life cycle data within buildings could be relevant. Um, there's also a very strong focus on kind of vulnerable uh, buildings as well, and older buildings. Um, and uh, there's, there's a, a focus on kind of bottom-up approaches as well. So very much bringing people and communities along with you on your journey of, of um, you know, de developing innovations in, in the built environment. Um, and we talked a lot about heat pumps, there is a heat pump uh, call uh, as well. So if you're involved in that space, that might be relevant. So uh, a lot around uh, deep uh, renovation and also inclusivity in the built environment as well. Um, but I'll just, I'll just quickly kind of talk through, talk through these. Um, so yeah, if, if you're, you know, there's also a future-proofing historical buildings uh, call uh, as well. So, if you're you know, involved in retrofitting the older buildings, that might be of interest. Um, and there's a strong focus on kind of cost efficient solutions um, as well. So, so there's, there's a lot a lot to look at, but I wouldn't I wouldn't um, go into too much detail. Um, if you are looking at how you can integrate your um, building within the energy grid, and um, so looking at kind of how your uh, smart technology within buildings relates to energy use in terms of mobility and um, you know, things like that, so you might want to look at smart grid ready buildings um, call um, and you know, there's also a call looking at how we can uh, optimise energy use within energy intensive um, IT systems um, as well. Um, so that's, that's really kind of the focus. So um, a lot of uh, organisations who are at the start of this journey will ask me, you know, you know I've talked a lot about consortia development and collaborations, who can actually access those um, discussions? The first thing I would say to do is to have a look at some of the European partnerships. So I mentioned the Built for People partnership, which is open to new applicants and new members, um, but there are other groups such as European Partnership for Clean Energy Transition, um, and those groups um, are useful to be a part of because you can often get kind of early access um, to the latest in terms of uh, new calls um, and also uh, you know allows you to build, build your network within Europe. Um, what we tend to find is the organisations that do very well in accessing this money are organisations that have a, a quite a strong track record. So they've coordinated proposals, they've participated in this. Um, but if you're at, if, if you're at the start of that journey, participating in one of these groups can be a really positive um, first step. Uh, um, and we always encourage you, if you if you join these organisations, to get your money's worth. Uh, you know, be an active member, uh, participate in groups, etc. Um, attend workshops, um, because you know it can be challenging to, to develop these networks. Um, and, and we we encourage you to, to, to participate in those. And, and they're very keen to see the UK continue to play you know, an active an active role in this as well. So if you're thinking um, about Horizon Europe uh, in terms of next steps, uh, you know, first thing you want to do is have a look through the work programme. So I'll send the slides around afterwards, happy to do that, but you might want to look through those 19 topics and have a look at whether they're relevant to you. Um, if you see something that's relevant, the next thing to do is consider what role your organisation can play with their consortium. So you know, what, what could you bring to the table? If you're a local authority, do you have um, buildings that you can offer for um, testing of pilot equipment. If you're a business that has an innovative product, is there a, you know, can you bring that innovative product to a project? Um, 
So that, that's, the, that's the next thing. To have. So have a think about how, how you could kind of um, contribute to a project. Um, you, you might also want to look at the recently funded project. So I mentioned the Impress project that involves IES, um, but um, you can actually go on the European Commission's Horizon website and quickly see what's recently been funded within the built environment. And that gives you a flavour of what the, the Commission are looking to fund at this moment in time and what these projects actually look like uh, in reality as well. Um, and you know, reach out to coordinators as well. Um, sometimes uh, a bit of cold calling is required, so you, you might want to just um, you know, contact these organisations that have coordinated successful proposals in the past, introduce yourself and um, ask to have a discussion because that can often be the best way to start to build your, your network. Um, you, you'll also see that um, there are a number of, kind of brokerage events which support you to develop uh, collaborations. Um, some of these have already happened. There are some more that will be coming up, and I'm sure Richard will be advertising those through his, his newsletter as well. But I would encourage you to attend those as well um, to get a feel for who in Europe um, is, is looking at these uh, funding calls.